So uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to day three of uh, the uh, symposium of the mathematics of deep learning, uh, notionally held at Bath, unfortunately online, but uh, going very well. Um, and I will be chairing the first two sessions, and it's my pleasure to introduce the first speaker of the morning, Young Chul Yi, who's the Kaist Endowed Chair a professor at the Department of Bio and Brain Engineering, Department of Mathematical Sciences at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, KAIS. He's uh, well known for many pioneering works in image and signal processing, including compressed sensing. Uh, and uh, in the last few years has written many influential and insightful articles on deep learning for image reconstruction. And today he's going to talk about optimal transport, cycle GAN, penalized least squares, intertwining theme for unsupervised learning for inverse problems. Please go ahead, Professor Yu. Great. Thank, thank you very much for the kind introduction. So you can hear me, right? Okay. So sure. it's really great honor to be here to present our work about the optimal transport and second and penalized uh, least square for the unsupervised learning in the inverse problem. So as you know, deep learning is a lot of advantages compared to the classical machine learning approaches. In the classical machine learning approaches, we usually need a feature engineering to extract the features to fit in to simple classifier, for example, support factor machine. But in the deep learning, we don't need those kinds of feature engineering. You can automatically extract the features and then design the classifier. And because of this simplicity, deep neural network has been widely used for various applications. In particular, uh, medical imaging and inverse problem, which I'm working on. So deep neural network has been widely used for the diagnosis and image analysis purpose. And recently, deep, one of the new frontiers of deep neural network is uh, application to the inverse problem. Here, yeah, the goal is to, uh, to use deep neural network directly from the sensor data to form an image. Of course, uh, better images compared to the classical analytic construction approach. In fact, in order to actually uh, understand those kinds of problems, let's go back, let's review the classical approach for the inverse problem, the penalized least square problem. Let's start with this formulation first. Here, usually penalized least square <coughs> has two terms. One is for the data fidelity term, and the other is a uh, regularization term. Usually the forward operator H is usually imposed. So for the measurement of Y, if we want to reconstruct X directly, then there are a lot of solutions. But however, by actually having the prior term or regularization term, you can actually reduce the feasible set of the solution. And by doing that, then you can actually mitigate the imposedness of the problem. In fact, uh, this has been widely used for classical approaches and the compressors approaches and etc. But there are several limitations. As you know, this prior term is basically based on the uh, top-down mathematical model. And furthermore, if you have a new measurement Y, you need to solve this optimization problem again. So, and this is usually computation expensive. And furthermore, this is so-called transductive. That means you can utilize this knowledge again for other uh, measurement cases as well. In fact, deep neural network has many advantages compared to that one because for a given y, and you can directly estimate the x image, unknown x images, and you can if ever this is usually trained in a feed forward manner. For example, if you have a pair measurement and unknown images by doing the supervised training, you can actually obtain this Im uh, images directly from the neural network. So this is actually the feed forward approach is most simplest form and the fast method. However, it usually requires a lot of data to have accurate reconstruction result. So you know, to address this problem, there are a lot of uh, variation of the deep neural network approaches. For example, model-based approaches or plug and play approaches. In these cases, you still use the panel risk form, but instead of using the top-down regulation term, we usually use a CNN-based regulation term. Here, the CNN Q is now denoisers, and this regulation term is basically imposing the penalty for the noise term. And the solution is solved again using the alternative method as well. However, because of this four term, usually this, you don't need a lot of very high complex neural network. And also you don't need a lot of training data, but still you can solve this problem. But 
issue again here is this is iterative approach. In fact, there is another type of approaches based on the dim image prior. This is actually the uh, uh, unsupervised learning approaches for, uh, for a given y, instead of uh, having x, you are now estimating the uh, neural network parameter directly to fit into this fidelity term. And now here, CNN is used as a regression term. But the pro main problem of this one is now, even the complexity is much higher than the penalty square, and also this is not inductive at all. So we need to solve this one again for the new measurement case. In fact, what we need is, in many applications, so we need some kinds of unsupervised learning method with the feedforward network structures as well without solving uh, this kinds of iteration and uh, again. In fact, there are a lot of need in the unsupervised learning in inverse problem. For example, let's think about the simple load city problem. In this case, this is coming from the cardiac CT problem. Here, uh, in this experiment, what we did is we have a high dose, uh, high dose acquisition in the diastole phase but low dose acquisition in other phase. But we are interested in imp uh, improving the quality of the diastole phase images from the low, uh, high dose images. But the problem is the heart is moving, so they are not perfect match each other. So the supervised learning is not possible. For example, metal artifact removal problem X-ray CT. Here, in order to do the supervised learning, you need to actually have in vivo human data without metals and the metal insert as well. So those kinds of things are not possible. For example, in the remote sensing application, in the remote sensing application, uh, there is uh, some errors in the sensors. In that case, there is some kinds of, uh, some kinds of uh, noise pattern like this, but it's difficult to actually obtain this noiseless image at the same scene, so supervised learning is not possible. Same thing in the uh, microscopy imaging for the blind decomposition and et cetera. In fact, to address this kind of supervised learning problem, uh, we have been actually investigating uh, the uh, second gen structure. And in fact, we found that there's a lot of interesting uh, structures which you can utilize uh, uh, for the unsupervised uh, way of doing the inverse problem. So in order to understand that, one, let's, this is some kind of geometric visualization we have in mind. For example, here Y is actually the data domain, uh, measurement domain, and X is image domain. Now this dot point, the purple dot point is actually the example of the measurement, which is the empirical distribution of the new. And the X is actually the example of the images with empirical distribution of mu here. Now, uh, the thing is in the unsupervised learning setup and there is no perfect match between this point and the dot point here. So the goal is instead of doing the point by point matching using some kind of forward and inverse solution, our goal is to match it distribution between the two. So for example, let's think about the forward physics. Then in that case, forward measurement, uh, the forward physics from the um, empirical data mu, unmatched data mu is usually, for example, on, sometimes depending on the problem, it's unknown or partially known and or completely uh, known sometimes. And it, it actually uh, transport this uh, empirical distribution to the mu phi, uh, phi here. But this is not usually the same as the empirical distribution you have as a measurement. Same thing happened if there is a, some kind of G-set function which is transport this one to here, this is not the same. So from a supervised learning point of view and especially distribution matching point of view, we wanna actually match it and minimize the distance between these two and between these two at the same time. And this is actually our geometric insight to actually design a supervised learning problem. In fact, there are several ways to measure statistical distances. For example, F divergence is quite often used in the machine learning literatures. Depending on the choice of F function, it can be a GAN or general F function, FBN function. Or Vashison 1 matrix is actually given in this kind of form. This is indeed a matrix which satisfies the full property of matrix. So for example, in the generative mode, it ends up with the WBN architecture. And Vajasan matrix has many advantages compared to the uh, divergence because divergence is only satisfied some of the uh, property of the matrix. So we are interested in utilizing this Vajasan matrix. In order to do that, we need to understand the optimized transport. I, I think many of mathematicians here are very familiar with this kind of mathematical optimized transport. We are now interested in transporting one distribution to another distribution. And this is usually given by the transport uh, push forward operation like this. And the optimal transportation problem is try to minimize the transportation cost 
which is satisfy this push forward uh, uh, constraint. This is original form of the optimal transportation problem to minimize transportation costs given this push forward constraint. However, this is no near constraint, it's difficult to solve. So the control formulation is, is given by finding this, allowing the mass splitting and finding the uh, uh, probabilistic way of finding the optimal transportation problem. For example, find the joint distribution to minimize the transportation cost such that it satisfies the marginal distribution. In fact, one of the nice things about the contract formulation is it has a nice dual formulation. For example, this is in regard to the joint distribution, but now this is with respect to the marginal distribution. And now this, there is a new function coming here because of the conversion to the marginal distribution. This is so-called the contributive potential and is a transform function, okay? Now, with this kind of mathematical background, we are now going back to the design of unsupervised uh, learning problem for the in uh, inverse problem. Again, here, we know depending on the problem, sometimes fourth physics is known and sometimes partially known or sometimes completely known. Now, our goal is to find the inverse solution as some kinds of using the G theta function and to transfer to this one to here. And then goal is to minimize the distance of this domain as well as distance domain at the same time. Now, from the Weierstein distance point of view, if you just minimize the distance between mu set and mu, in that case, this is given in this way. And if you minimize the distance between new phi and new, then this is given by the Weierstein matrix given in this way. However, the, catch, the problem here is now if you minimize this one, the joint distribution to minimize this one may be, and joint distribution to minimize this one may not be the same. So this is not the correct way to minimize in both of them together. In fact, the correct way to minimize in this formulation is we are now interested in finding the joint distribution, which is simultaneously minimize this part as well as this part together. So if you actually formulate this, your transportation problem, primary problem like this, that one of the actual contributions in our recent paper is actually if we find the dual formulation of this and by after several kinds of like a steps of mathematical derivation, you end up with very interesting cyclic architectures here. Now this is a cyclic consistency term here and there is a discriminator term here. Now let's see more in detail. Now here cyclic uh, consistent term has a very interesting formulation here. Now this phi phi is now coming from the fourth physics of the operator. Depending on the problem, it can be unknown or partially known, and it can be completely known. And G theta is an inverse pass. This is a neural natural. Now, discriminator is also, there is a discriminator here. We are now talking about the Bajasthan matrix. So this satisfied one lips condition like this. Now, this is actually, uh, again, for the X domain and also for the Y domain like this. This is a standard double gun uh, discriminator here. Now, based on this kind of formulation, now you can see some very interesting relationship between this kind of cyclic formulation for the unsupervised learning problem and penalized least square problem here. Now, again, in the penalized least square, there is a data fidelity term here and degradation term here. In this kind of optimal transportation problem, the transportation course has also data fidelity term here and the regularization term. Now, regularization term is coming from the inverse path. However, more interesting is not from this kind of similarity, but all, it's all coming from here. Now, the problem of this panel least square is now minimizing this cost function with respect to one x. So finding one x, unknown x for a given y is a problem. Now here, in this kind of transportation problem formulation, now for a given this one, now for all the combination of x, y, we are trying to find the joint distribution with respect to marginal constraint to minimize this average, tra uh, average transportation cost. So that means even though it looks somewhat similar, but this is now minimizing the average cost for, for all the realization between uh, unknown image X and unknown measurement. So in fact, this can be considered as a stochastic generalization or penalistic problem, okay? Now, based on this kind of understanding now, we can actually use this one for various, uh, in, uh, various problem in actual uh, physical problem. Now the, the, uh, the issue here is now, 
depending on the problem. Now the fold physics is different. And because of that, the design of the psychic and architectures is depending on the fold physics as well. Now here, this is actually the first example we are talking about is unsupervised Lodo city reconstruction problem. Here, this is again, I described briefly before, coming from the multi-phase cardiac CT denoising problem. Here, the, for the heart, the diastole phase, we are acquiring the high dose, and for the system phase with the low dose. And the goal is actually usually the doctors looking at this mainly for the diastole phase, but they actually uh, move between the phases, and even though there is noise, they can actually interpret from their mind and then may we see whether there is some kind of reason in this heart rhythm. But our goal is actually to utilize this kind of thing to improve this quality. How can you do that? This is not magic, this is because heart is moving. So in these cases, the formulation we end up is now, the fourth physics here is now, fourth physics is now from this high dose to low dose. And inverse physics is, uh, inverse uh, solution is from low dose to high dose. The corresponding generator for the low dose to high dose is now G, G, A, B, G, zeta here. Now this is a fourth part, F, zeta, but now the problem is now generating noise is not so simple because in the usually X-ray CT cases, there are a lot of nonlinear physics going on. So exact modeling, or just like a modeling with the Gaussian, it does not work at all. So you need to actually model those kinds of things. So instead of modeling all the complicated physics, we are now trying to estimate the model as well. In that case, this can be considered as unknown as well. In that case, there is a two neural network for the four uh, on inverse, physics, inverse solution and the forward physics. And because of that, there is a two uh, discriminators here from the uh, discriminator term here. One is actually differentiating between the low, uh, real noise image and the synthetic noise image and real clean images, uh, high dose images, and the synthetic high dose images. And there is a psychic consistent term here. By the way, actually there is also, uh, there's a, we use a identity term here in this formulation. This can be also very easily incorporated in this transportation course. In this case, identity loss is like this. For example, if X, the high dose image is given in this uh, images, in that case, it shouldn't change the images at all. So that means, in this kinds of cost function is not for the joint distribution, it's only for the, with respect to the marginal distribution with respect to high dose. In fact, we believe we actually, I, I know there is a very interesting paper from Ad, uh, Jonas, Adler Jonas here, he mentions about the corner of the second gun, about like a, there is some kinds of corners in the second gun architectures, but I believe this, by adding this kinds of identity loss, those kinds of things could be, uh, uh, or maybe uh, some other thing maybe it works as well. But anyway, there is a way to actually handle those kind of things as well. Anyway, empirically, using this kind of structures, we have this kind of interesting job. This is five dose, five percent of the noise image as an input here, and this is a target high dose images. Now this is learning with, with this kind of set of data and low dose data here. Now we train the neural network and. Now, this is actually neural network output. Now, this is a difference between the output and input image. As you can see here, just noise is now removed and the there is no structure changes. And you can actually remove a lot of noise very, uh, uh, very, uh, without any altering any kind of structure. Now, as I mentioned, that we mentioned about the identity loss. And uh, for example, if you actually don't use any kind of identity loss, what happens is, then there is a, if we actually, especially we talk about later in the next slide as well, there is actually this, sometimes it's difficult to control the generation of a spurious artifact, especially if we don't use any kind of cyclic GAN structure, we just use one GAN structure is here. In that case, the image is very, looks very, uh, very nice, but however, the detail, you can see the deformation of the images compared to the original image. And for example, in this case, this is a high dose image, and now, if we use in the denoisers, then it shouldn't create any kind of uh, changes. So this is a difference images. You don't create any kind of thing, but without identity loss, we're just using GAN, it actually changed the image. So that means those things are very important. Now the second case we are thinking about is now, in this cases, the physics, Ford physics is partially known. 
especially the whole physics is known as a linear convolution. This is a deconvolution problem, blind deconvolution problem of microscopy. Here, this is a blurry images and high, uh, high resolution images and blurry images. Now, our goal is to find this generator to decomprove this image to generate high, uh, high noise images. And now this blur, blur incorporation is usually based on the point spread function, so it blurred like that. Now in that case, transportation course is given in this way. Now fourth physics is now given by the linear operator rather than the nonlinear operator. Because of that, the formulation is now we only have a one neural network, and this is a linear uh, network as well, like, like C. And also, we still need the two generator, or uh, two discriminator, to differentiate between the blur images and the clean images. This is some of the results for the real data. For example, this is a blurry measurement, and this is a commercially available software using some kind of like a, uh, iterative way of doing the deconvolution, and this is actually proposed method. And this is compared to the supervised learning and those things. And basic, uh, basically, our biological colleagues already found that this is a microtubular structures. It should be connected to each other. And those kinds of structures are intact in this kind of reconstruction based on this risk-driven uh, deconvolution approaches. Now, another, this is more uh, very uh, also uh, interesting uh, applications here. Now, this, in these kinds of examples, what they are doing is like this. So this is actually the compressed sensing MRI problem. Now, why is actually the, uh, this P omega is a subsampled image and F is a Fourier transform. Now, if you actually do the inverse Fourier transform after zero padding of this one, we have a blurry images like this with a lot of alice and artifacts you can see here. Now, original image is, which is unmatched, is a clean image without any kind of alice and artifacts. And now G theta is actually try, is a neural network to convert this image to here like this. Now, important thing here is now fourth physics here is now completely known. So we know the Fourier transform and we know the subsampling operation on P omega here. And you know the inverse problem of F inverse here. And in that cases, this is actually a determinant operation. That means you, you can just use a determinative forward model in this one here like this. So that means there's only one general neural network based generator. And also, because of that, there is no competition of the, with the discriminator in these past branches. So because of that, we also just need one discriminator here. So the architecture is much simpler than the standard cyclogon with the two generators and two discriminators. In fact, one of the difficulty of the training the cyclogon architecture is there is a four network. So two deep neural network for the generators, two discriminator network. So sometimes one of them is not converted and total network is not converted. So users still spend quite a lot of time to make this one converge, especially for high dimensional problem and yeah, in this kind of medical problems as well. But then need a lot of like uh, know-hows and training, et cetera. But now here we have only two uh, neural network and they are not competing to each other. For example, this one and this one is not alternating to each other. In fact, this works as a regularization talk. So the, uh, the training of this one is very, uh, very stable and you can actually easily train this kind of structure. Here, this is some of the example. This is actually, this is actually the result for the uh, input image with, uh, 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 with the fast MRI data set. You can see a lot of Alice in artifact like this. And this is a supervised learning approaches. You actually use a, a matched, uh, high resolution images with, and then learn the mapping directly. And this is actually, sorry. now this is a cyclic architecture, conventional cyclic architecture with the two generator and two discriminator. Yeah, this is better than this, but by, uh, because as uh, man, the difficulty of training of this one in this kind of cases, it was, very, uh, it was actually difficult. We, are, we my students didn't, it wasn't able to remove this kind of still remaining early in artifact in some of the images. And this is now proposed method with the same student. He can actually easily train this one and using the neural network architectures. Now you can see that clearly most of the, this kinds of early in artifact is gone. 
And furthermore, some other images, for example, here, if you see in this kind of example, and these images are now, for example, here, in this kind of example cases, and this one is actually the, uh, this one is now uh, to, uh, uh, higher, even higher than the supervised learning case. In fact, this kind of unsupervised learning, sometimes we observe a lot of examples that sometimes unsupervised learning using this kind of psychic and architecture sometimes prove, improve the, not only the quantitative result, but also like qualitative result in terms of textures and et cetera. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And this, another example is actually MRI for the three-dimensional MRI of the time of flight uh, cases here. In time of flight, MRI has a lot of a very important uh, uh, imaging uh, tools in the MRI. What they're interested in is imaging this kind of vessel structure. The standard way of imaging the angiography and the angiogram is using the contrast agent. You in, in, inject the contrast agent in the, uh, in, in the patient vein, for example, and then based on that, you actually obtain the angiogram imaging with the contrast. But however, in a lot of contrast agent actually has uh, some allergic reaction to the patient, for example. In the MR contrast agent has been actually a very problem for several years. So that's actually the people's interest in imaging that one without any kind of contrast agent. So in the time of flood imaging is what they do is like that. For example, here, this, uh, this blood is flowing in this direction. Now you are now taking this one with the spin with the uh, rotation of spin here. And then this flows go away, uh, go in this direction. And now you are imaging in other slices. You can do the same thing in the three dimensional case. The, by doing that, and you can actually see the spins which is flowing. And then based on that, and you can do the three dimensional angiogram. Now, usually the structure, this is a three dimensional volume. So because of that, the occlusion time for those three dimensional volume is very, uh, very long. So what people usually do is like the exhalation. For example, this is a, 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 a standard sampling pattern. Like a, this is corona direction using this kind of sampling like this. And if you see from the axial views, then you can actually some of the, some of the axial views are now very small number of uh, Fourier samples and the others are like this. Now from here, People use compressed sensing approaches. Traditionally, there are several techniques using the compressed sensing, and people are interested in using the deep learning. Here, we are interested in using the deep learning, but using the unsupervised way without any matched uh, reference data. In fact, this is actually a very nice application of all the theory, we actually, all the model we have derived. For example, in our model, we consider the cases when Ford model is completely known and Ford model is, un uh, is, uh, is, is unknown. This is actually the uh, combination of the two. For example, here in the corona direction, we need to do, because we, it's very difficult to actually construct three dimensional volume at the same time because of the G GPU memory issues. So this volume is very big. So you can handle this one in the GPU uh, for the deep learning uh, processing. So we are doing the two dimensional construction. So what we are doing is like this. We are doing the corona direction construction along the sampling pattern like this. And in these cases, we know the sampling direction, and also we know the, all the core, uh, core, uh, core directional case space measurement. So in these cases, we are doing the reconstruction based on the complete knowledge of the physics. Now, after doing that one, usually doctors are looking at this angiogram in the axial images as well. So that means instead of doing this direction, you need to actually do the refinement in the axial direction. In these cases, all the core images now are uh, merged together as a thermal square. Now, in the, after doing that, there is no complete physics for the fold mapping and the aliasing problem. So the, in this case, the problem is now two unknown fold and inverse uh, problem. So based on this formulation, now in this kind of corner reconstruction, we actually apply this kind of uh, psychic and architecture with a deterministic fold problem like this and inverse path using the neural network. And because only one thing is unknown, uh, on there is only one generator. We have a uh, one discriminator here. Now for the exterior reconstruction cases, because we don't know the physics in these cases after some of the square, there is no exact physics. Because of that, we have an inverse, inverse solution as well as the forward physics is now more than a neural network. 
And now the goal is now reconstructing this one first and then refine this one using both of them in unsupervised manner. By the way, one of the important things is because we are decoupling this one, you can use a different kinds of set of data for training of this and this, and this one with the different data as well. Now, this is some of the result we actually can show, see here. This tableau is a three examples of the three patient data, which is coming from the banders. In fact, this is from the Phillips. This is compressed sense, what they call the brand name is compressed sense reconstruction for the eight times acceleration. And this is a deep learning unsupervised way of the deep learning consumption. Now, if you see here, this facet structure, there is a blurry and also background noises as you can see here. Now, however, in this kind of unsupervised way of learning it, you can clearly see very fine details of the vessel structures you can see here. This is a coordinate view. This is again banded, uh, banded reconstruction result. Now this is actually our uh, result here. This is actually now reconstruction result from this direction. Now from here, you can see that more vessels can be seen from here. Oh, and we can actually utilize this kind of idea for further uh, further extension. For example, one of the things we can we develop is so-called uh, better cyclical architecture. This is inspired from the autoencoder. In fact, autoencoder is another generative model to use the ever loss function. If you see the ever loss function, there is a likelihood term and the latent space distance term here. This using the KA divergence. Now, by adding the noise, we can generate the multiple image. Now, uh, I can skip here. And in the, now, one of the interesting idea of is extension is so-called the beta cyclogram. In the beta cyclogram, what they do is they impose more weighting in this latent space KR divergences. And by doing that, and they are more precise control of the latent space. For example, here, this direction is not controlled well, but in the beta VA, you can control it. Now, you can actually use a similar kinds of ideas to design the cyclogram architecture. So now here, this is for the meta artifact construction uh, reduction application. This is artifact free images, and this is artifact images. Now you are generating inverse paths, and the fourth path is now simulating this metallic images. Now, however, we don't need to actually generate a very high quality metal images. So that means we have a more focusing on this direction rather than this. So that means we have more weight here. Now, if we impose those kinds of things with the weight here, we are now less weighting in this data fidelity term. It turns out if you find the dual formulation, nothing changes. Only change is now psychic and architectures here. And this term is basically the same. Of course, the, instead of one lips, we are now become one of better lips constant, but that can be easily a similar structure. So we are under with this kind of structure. And with this attention, we are actually using the attentions as well. Now, this is some of the result. Now, this is actually the metal artifact from this uh, dental images. You can see the artifact in this, uh, this kind of metallic artifact as well. And also between the, uh, uh, between the metals, there are a lot of this kind of striking artifact here. Now, this is actually the linear interpolation and this is a uh, very popular approach is in the uh, physics, com uh, 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 physics community. There are still remaining artifact and there are still remaining artifact in this metal region. But however, using this kind of structure, without any kind of reference data, you can actually clearly see the removal of this one as well. And furthermore, if we just put the non-metal region or very small metal regions, then all the other architecture change the image content as you can see here. But in this kind, if you well control it, you can actually generate that there is no, basically no changes in this kind of structure. Now, uh, how many minutes do I have, by the way? Um, a couple more, uh, if you don't okay. mind. Okay, yeah, this is the last part. So, so this is actually application for the multi-domain transfer. So what you call the multi-domain psychic architecture. Here, the goal is application is actually coming from the ultrasound applications. So he, ultrasound usually have a delay and some beamform images. We usually have a several artifacts, for example, a little bit of uh, speckle artifact or sometimes a blurry artifact. But depending on the application, some users are interested in the convolution and some users are interested in this speckling. However, now depending on users, they choose this one, or, but they, the, this need to be to provide both of them together. Now, if you use a standard psychic architecture, in that case, the domain transfer, you, you need a two generator. So it's a scanner has a two neural network 
to convert this one to the deconvolution images or this back image. And same thing, uh, but in our cases, our goal is to design just one neural network to actually convert these two things at the same time, uh, not at the time, depending on the need. For us, you may say you can use a Stargan architecture, but Stargan is actually a symmetric architecture. In these cases, for our images, we need to actually go back to, for example, DAS generated DAS images, but that's actually not applicable in the medical application because DAS is given from the physics. Our goal is to generate the other direction rather than going in the direction. So by spending some network expressivity in this bi-directional one, we can actually design one network to actually have a better uh, result. In fact, this formulation can be actually formulated in a similar way, in a geometric way. For example, here, this is the same thing. Only thing is now in the X domain, there is two domain for the deconvolution and also this backup. Now we are now having another domain. Now this cascade is transferred from here to in domain. Now this is a binary domain. Now this is also measured is in the statistical distances. Now in this case, this statistical distance is discrete one, so we can do measure this one as a KL divergence. So now you formulate this one. This is a Bacherstein distance and then KL divergence. In the dual formulation, this is again psychic on architecture. And this is now after removing all unnecessary term, it ends up with the cross correlation, uh, cross entropy term here. And this is a resulting architecture and this generator. Now here you can see here, we are now adding the mask vector depending on the domain we are targeting. And then just using that and depending on that, and you can generate the multiple target images from by, by just using the same vectors here. This is some of the result, for example, and this one is actually the DAS image, and this is a Stargan image for converting the deconvolution image and the, the blur images. Now, compared to the target image, for example, here, and this is actually the, uh, this is actually the offline, the deconvolution algorithm and offline the spectral algorithm. Now, compared to that, there is a still remaining artifact here, but using this kind of new architecture, you can clearly see much better improvement compared to other architectures. In summary, so unsupervised learning problem is indeed very important in the medical and inverse problem as well. So, and our goal is that like, uh, founding is, and to address this problem, optimal transportation formulation is quite um, useful. And in fact, that is a very close relationship with the uh, uh, panel and least square in terms of uh, transportation costs. So in using this kind of geometric view, we can actually generalize this one for other problems as well. With that, I'd like to conclude. Thank you very much.